Smiley side here. I have a gold brick. Okay, it's fake. It's a souvenir from when a friend of mine visited Fort Knox. But let's pretend that it's gold. If I cut it in two, I'll have two gold bricks, but smaller than, than this first one. The total mass of both smaller bricks is the same as the mass of the original gold brick. So, unfortunately, I haven't gained anything. And I could take one of those halves and cut it into two and make more pieces of gold. And so on. And so on. Ad infinitum. Wait. Really? Ad infinitum? To infinity? Or will there come some point when I can't do that? Will there come a point when not just me, not just the National Science Laboratories, not anyone could cut it in two and have two smaller pieces of gold? The ancient philosophers of Greece debated this. Famous Aristotle said that you could continue forever, ad infinitum. Another Greek philosopher, Democritus, disagreed. He said that at some point you would have a piece of gold that you couldn't cut. It would be atomic. Atomic means uncuttable undividable, unbreakable, and the like. So he thought that there would be some smallest piece of gold, some smallest particle. So what is gold in the first place? Well, it's a metal. It's shiny, malleable. It conducts heat and electricity really well, and it's very resistant to acids. Now that we've managed to split the atom, and we know that atoms can be cut, but it is pretty dangerous to do it, those are nuclear bombs and nuclear reactors. So atoms aren't really atomic. But if you could get down to a single gold atom and cut it, you wouldn't have two smaller pieces of gold anymore. You'd have some protons, neutrons, and quite a bit of energy. What are those things that are smaller than the atom? They're the things that the atom is made of. So an atom is the smallest bit of something, an element, we'll get to those in another video, and still have pieces of that element. But what are those smaller things that aren't atoms? Well, scientists call them subatomic particles because they're the particles that make up an atom, and there are three kinds of them. Protons, neutrons, and electrons. The protons and neutrons are stuck together in the center, at the nucleus of the atom. The electrons move around the nucleus, kind of orbiting, but not really. Protons are positively charged. They have a charge of plus one. Neutrons are neutral. They have a charge of zero. Now, a simple atom doesn't have a charge, so you need a negative charge to offset the protons. The electrons have a charge of minus one. To have no overall charge, an atom has to have the same number of electrons as protons. That doesn't mean that an atom can't have a different number of protons and electrons. It's just that once that happens, it's not called an atom anymore. It's called an ion. All that happens in chemistry. So, by definition, an atom has the same number of protons and electrons, and thus it doesn't have a charge. Okay, so in the center, you have this tiny little bundle of protons, positive charge, and neutrons, no charge. Where are the electrons? 
they're moving around the nucleus. Here's one of those simplifying times. The electrons are moving in different energy levels. Each energy level can hold a certain number of electrons. The first energy level, the one closest to the nucleus, can hold two electrons, no more. The second energy level can hold eight electrons. It's common to draw this in a diagram like this. This is a Bohr diagram named after physicist Niels Bohr. In the center, we write the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. Around the nucleus, we draw circles for each energy level. Oh, electrons fill in the energy levels from starting at the lowest one, the first one that can only hold two, continuing on out to the last one, the seventh one. Okay, that, that seems simple enough. Well. As I said, that's the simplification. One thing that's way off on this is the scale. If we blew up the size of the nucleus to be as large as a blueberry, that, that big, and put it at the center of a football field, the first electrons would be as far away as the cheap seats in the stadium. Also, the circles where we draw the electron paths aren't shaped like what they end up looking like in real life. For reasons having to do with quantum mechanics, the different energy levels are shaped differently. But you don't need to know this in middle school. That only comes out in high school a little, and in college chemistry a lot. For now, this model is good enough for our understanding. So the center is the nucleus, where the protons and neutrons hang out. The electrons move around the nucleus in different energy levels, filling them from the inner ones to the outer ones. And really, that's it for simple atoms. Hope you enjoyed this. Riley Psy out.